Mark A. Hello, everybody. Uh, match number two from the Oz Draft Tournament. We have Team Tolandina versus Team Liam. Uh, game one is Arabia. And, yeah, here we go. We've got Mr. Uncle Iro here playing in the blue as the Japanese. And he's partnered with Tolandina. So we've got the, the strongest player, Tolandina, with Uncle Iro, who's, I believe, the weakest player on his team. So they're playing on one side together. And then over on the other side, we've got Mr. Snedo, who is one of the weaker players on Liam's team, but not the weakest, I believe. Playing as the Dravidians with Timber, playing as the Slavs as his pocket. Hero was the fifth player? Yeah, I thought so. Snedo is goated. I mean, come on, guys. Like, let's be real. Snedo versus Timber and... And Liam, you gotta you gotta have realistic uh, expectations from your players. Team Seto won't stand this. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll take it back. Seto is the god gamer. He is going to hard carry his side one v two. Timber is going to be full playing on the other side to give them a chance to sustain the game. Uh, but on the other side, we do have Woot playing in the pocket as Kamer, following up on Bot Mali. The, uh, the German player was, I believe, living in Malaysia? Or, or something similar. One of the, the South Asian countries playing now Oz Tournament. And he has the Portuguese. But he's gone for a lumber camp! What? Why does the Portuguese player have a lumber camp and not a mill? I do not like this at all. That is not how you're supposed to play Portuguese. You do mill first, you have sick ego, and then you just clap. You clap really hard. But against them, we have Finrod, the Feligant, playing in the orange as the Incas, and then we have Captain Leon here as the pocket. And he has been complaining all tournament that he was going to have to play flank, but clearly that's not the case. He's found a way to put himself in the pocket position, get himself some, some carry potential. So, let's just speed up a little bit through the Dark Age. No one's going for any laming. You're not allowed to steal boars with with your scout in this tournament. You can only steal sheep and send villagers forwards if you want to like kill deer or kill a boar. But because of the 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 lack of like full on yoinking a boar, you're sort of stuck um, staying at home pushing your deer as the the baguette meta sort of indicates. You see, the first players going up to Castle Age on 18 pop, I would expect everybody else is probably going to be doing around 19, maybe 20. That sounds like a rule designed to nerf Marley. Actually, it's a rule designed to nerf Faley. But, um... It hits a couple of other people. Liam complaining about the leadership of Team Liam? I mean, yeah, that's... That is how Liam goes. He's trying to talk up the rest of, like, talk down his chances so that people underestimate his team, is, I think, what he's going for. I don't like this uptime. 21 pop as Portuguese with a mill and a lumber camp and a mining camp? What are you doing, Molly? What are you doing? There's, like, 40 seconds uptime difference, almost. I do not like this at all. I do not like this at all. Go back to normal speed, there we are. Yeah, like, you should just get rolled by by a proper 18 or 19 pop. Oh, he's okay, he's going for Militia. What in the world? This is not how you play team games. Have you ever, ever played in the baguette meta before, man? You can't be mad at arms. I don't like this archery range placement, though. I think it should be over here on the hill. Ooh. Okay. This... This might work out, but not because it's good. Okay. Getting the quick walls up. I like it. I like it. I don't like that this is open, though, because now your wood's exposed. Forcing more quick walls. And then, you've only got seven villagers on your wood line, and these four are going to bump, like, mad villagers. Like, half of them aren't going to be able to work properly at this point until he gets the first archers out to clean this up. Which... To be fair, the first archer is on the way. Back at home, Marley dropping the two rangers himself. We see the blacksmith as well. And the man-at-arm tech has come in. Oh, no. 
Oh, is he gonna get the quick wall in? No, I, I would think not. I think that Phil's dead. The blacksmith is gonna be denied indefinitely. I think until Liam shows up with some scouts. He does have a stable. He does have scouts coming in. But the man at arms versus scouts is just so nice. Instant tower. Uh, I wouldn't hate it. A tower like next to this mining camp is. Possibly going to be required to, to stave off all this aggression. That's the second villager that's gone down. Over on the other side, Red is coming forwards with three archers. Scout's here to defend. Blue only has two archers and he's not creating... Okay, now he's creating two more. But he's got, like, decent wall setups. So, like, this army can't do any any damage initially. And the man-at-arms have now been cleaned up. But... Ooh, is he a skirmisher for Marley? You don't make scums. Yeah, I I bought Molly's like in a decent position, but he shouldn't be. Like Orange is far behind in bills now, with oh two minutes of idle time already. Especially as Inkers, or like having an Inka player on the team at least, you shouldn't ever have to idle your TC. I think because you've got that extra extra llama to keep you going until you get your berries. And the fact that he's not on his berries yet is probably going to be an issue because I would expect. All the flanks to be going to the berries at this stage. Show us the Snedo Man. The Snedo Man just lost all of his army. So, is that what you wanted to see? Look. Here is where his army was, if he had it. Snedo domination is a go. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Blue has, you know, seven archers. Snedo's only got three. He's got a bunch in production, though. But I don't think this wall's going to go up, and I would... Ex no, tell him where you're going. I think just... Diving here, getting up on this hill, taking control of it, pressuring down onto the gold and the berries should be the aim of the game here. I also really don't like this uh, archery range position. That's not where you should have built them. Like, considering your gold and your berries are here, I think securing this hill with your military buildings should have been the, uh, the main priority early in the game. But they're poking around. But these archers, they get on the hill, they should be in a good position. Over on the other side... Uh... Finrod doesn't have too many archers, but they have managed to push Marley off his gold. And essentially, we've got the exact same issue here, where this hill needed to be walled, you know, in a reasonable time frame to avoid army just sitting on it and constantly denying this gold. And he's already towered his wood line, so he can't tower the gold. He's now forced to move to this really, really exposed gold on the front of his base. I guess the, the benefit for this gold is it's a bit hard to get to, considering that the army is all stuck around the bottom side of his base right now. This game is over. Which game is this over for, is the question. Right? Oh, it seems like Tullin and Uncle Iro are heading back. They're not... They're not committing to taking control of this nice position, position that they had. So far, the villager difference between the teams is almost entirely caused by Mr. Finrod. Oh, but these archers, they are out of position. Where are you going, Tullin? And where are all your scouts, man? They're all over here. Army numbers are, are close-ish. 11 and 7 to 10 and 5. So once these scouts uh, regroup, they should be able to try and take a fight, but losing an archer there for free is not ideal. Look at that army lead for Snedo. Snedo has 15 and Blue has 16. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Zane. I like the preemptive tower on the gold. It is going to hurt his uptime a little bit. He's not going to be able to, to you know, sell stone to go up really fast. But it does keep him safe, considering that he's, he's walled. I don't think so. I think that that is open. Oh boy, but now they've just completely skipped Marley and they are hitting the pocket. Woot is trying to rush up this tower, but even if the tower goes up, the archers are hiding underneath it already. The second stable has been denied. This is not looking great. This tower is going to get killed, taken down by the scouts and the archers. This is going to be rough. Teal's only got the one scout, a couple more in queue. Upgrade-wise, no bloodlines. He does have attack and armor, though. For uh, Liam's team, neither of the pockets have done armor yet. Which is a little interesting. 
I mean, I feel like at this point you just keep circling around, right? You go hit green. Force this army to chase you, and that keeps you safe at home, right? Because they can't afford to, to just leave. No barrack, OP. Ooh, he does have a barrack. That's a bit sus. Yeah, but now, this should be a, a pain in the ass. Okay, Tullin is like, full brought back all of his cav. But here comes yellow and red. Okay, we've got a four-player fight coming in right here. Looking just at the HP pools, it looks like Liam's team should be in a decent position. Oh no, I'm not counting the blue archers. Okay, let's get rid of those bills. Nope. There we are. Okay, never mind, I take it back. I wasn't counting all the blue archers that have shown up. Fucking rainbow it. Yep, that's what's happening here. And that is a, a pretty decent clean up here. The problem is just that Grey and Teal have taken quite a bit of damage, and we see that Red's up to Castle Age already. What a god gamer. Has he sold his stone? Red. He sold 100 stone. Okay, he sold a little bit. Two scouts on any other part of the map would win the game right now. Um, Not sure about that. Seems most of the players are close to being fully walled. I think red is the only one that's open. Jake is a little bit dicey. But, considering that he's up to Castle Age, I think he should be pretty confident in being able to defend himself with his uh, crossbows he's soon going to have. Army-wise, I'm not sure what Miley's doing walling out here. That's a bit, a little bit ambitious, and it's also going to cause some problems for Woot's army potentially getting forwards and um, supporting his archers, or soon-to-be crossbows. The big issue here, though, is... Woot is not up to Castle Age. It looks like he's short, you know, 300 food. He'll get there pretty soon as Eskimo. And Blue is just really suffering right now. He's not able to click up anywhere. How many farms does he have? Oh, he's got 13 farms. That's far too many. 13 farms is too many. But he's... He sold his... He used his stone for the tower. Which makes using the market a little bit less desirable. He does have a shit ton of archers, though. I will say that. 31 archers, that's 14 crossbows. Shield mummy is 1,200. Yeah, but y you gotta learn, right? You make less farms, you put more on gold, and you buy the food. That's that's how you get yourself up. Farms are just too slow. How many farms do we have over here? 11. Still a few too many. 8. 8 is the correct number. Although he has... He did have 10. Robots for writing constructive tourism. That's what I'm trying to do, yes. Exactly. Also farm, something that you only see pockets make. Or people who are playing arena. Although even then you might not make farms on arena if you're all in monk rushing. So market is meta now. The market has been meta for like a couple of years now at least. Oh, blue's just chilling. Where are red's crossbows? He's not really using his faster age up time. Which I guess is quite difficult though, right? As I said, he has a huge archer advantage, he's also got the tower on his goal. There's not a lot of damage that he can do right now. Uh, on the other side, we see players coming forwards. We've sort of got the same issue, where the slightly slower player to Castle Age has a few more crossbows. But both the pockets do have big, big scout, soon to be like have armies, which potentially does give them the... the army advantage in early castle age, because essentially a light cav is almost the same as a knight once you get plus two fierce armor. Like, they tank just as well, basically, in terms of, you know, negating the crossbow's ability to kill things, and then letting the crossbow's hopefully fire away and, and kill. Sorry, Captain Noz, I'll catch up on the meta soon. I mean, if your captain hasn't taught you the meta, then that sounds like the captain's fault, not yours. Um... I'm not sure if you can even get through after killing this house, to be honest, because I think that that's possibly still walled behind that. Uh, over on the other side, everyone's just sort of posturing. I'm not sure if camping this hill is the correct position to be in. Like, as soon as they see this army, they just need to rush for this hill. Whoever holds this hill sort of dominates this part of the battlefield. Look at Iro Lumbers. I mean, I guess he probably only built this lumber camp recently, but... 
It's not the worst that I've seen. I, I... What? what? Tullen, what the fuck are you doing? Tullen! 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 What? What are you doing, man? Okay, I guess Marley's having troubles, but you're just gonna leave your guy to die to try to save the other side from dying? I... I don't think that's the play. You, yeah, Fanta, that's exactly what I was thinking. I just didn't want to call you out publicly. You know. I, I wanted to, to allow you the opportunity to remain anonymous. I don't... I don't know if I like this from Tolan. I, I definitely like this, though, from Timber and Seto. Just saying, okay, well, if the pocket's left, we're just gonna... We're just gonna start diving. That's a Hank call to swing. I mean, Hank's not playing, but possibly. That's it, if you don't swing, I resign. <laughs> oh, that is not ideal. Our oh, Teal also didn't do like I have any of so many scouts. Yellow is not sending any reinforcements to help out, it seems. So they're just saying, you know, good luck, you guys. We're going to go bully the shit out of green. And oh my lord. Oh, I think this is GG. I think, I think it's over, honestly. Like, Tullin's gonna lose so many villagers here. It's insane. It's insane. I, I, this army is in a decent position, but you just go hide under the TT for a little bit, and killing a pocket is so much more valuable. I don't think Tullin... I mean, they definitely win it with numbers eventually, right? But it's... All of the army, like, all the cav army is essentially dead at this point. And while this is going on, Tullin's not on gold... He's lost so many bills. Let's go back to the uh, EQKD. 427. Ugh. Uh, the crossbows are still here, still roaming around, still denying these farms. I mean, maybe it's just the pocket in me, but... I feel like leaving one of the flanks to die a little bit is better than killing off the pocket. <laughs> Especially if you're playing with, like, the weaker players on flank. That makes so much more sense to protect your captain instead of throwing away everything just to try to save the other side. You just need to try to kill harder and essentially base race. Liam carries the fucking game every day. I mean, this is why he wants to be pocket, right? So that he can carry. Uh, Orange is going to have a rough time getting gold, though. That gold's out the front. He's obviously lost his main gold. This gold over here is a little bit exposed. And I like the addition of a ram to start cleaning up these buildings. It's a very good call by Marley. Oh boy, and now the knights are coming in. Going back for more raids. Yeah, Timber and Liam are just in such an insane position right here. Does Tullin still have a market? He does still have a market, but he's not got no, no gold, right? You need market, you need gold to use the market. You know when you were dead when the highest scoring team has bot in their name? I mean... Arabia bots are a thing, Shed. I wouldn't mind Marley ramming me either. Okay. Those are your kinks, maybe, Boo. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave them to discuss in private, I think. Implying the market isn't for panic selling 2k wood. I mean, I would hope that nobody has 2k wood at this stage of the game. Like, 500 is, like, a lot. Having 2k would be insane. Which player is Liam? Liam is why hello there. I guess I could change him, but uh, that's the name that he goes by. But, you know, Team Why Hello there just doesn't have the same ring to it, so he is Team Liam. But it does look like that Finrod is taking a big fat sausage right here. He is 100% going to die soon. But at the same time, I think the other side is, you know, in a pretty solid position. They've got a, a 40 deal lead and essentially equal in numbers. I mean, in army numbers, I mean. So... Oh, and they're even, like, attacking both sides of his base, right? All these crossbows are down here, chasing away these knights and, and crossbows here, while his gold gets hard raided here. Timber is... Timber is playing a really good game. Look, look at this. 33-0 to zero KD. That is a pocket doing pocket things. 97 bills? So he also has the most bills in the game, and he has killed the most bills. I think he's probably the only person in AV2 where everyone knows him by his real name and not his gaming ring name. Yep, yep, essentially. 
That is... That is a very apt way to put it. Okay. We see Liam going for a little bit of a raid. I don't know if this is really going to make a difference. You know, killing five or six bills from the pocket isn't going to save you here. I feel like you need a mass, you know, 20, 20, 30 knights, and then get a big engagement and try to just out micro a fight or something like that. Uh, Snedo now is on the way up to Imp. He's got a big mass of crossbows. He's got a decent build count. He's been, you know, 2TC, I don't want to say booming, but 2TC echoing is how it is. Boo is known by his name. Yep, his name is King. Oof. Imagine hitting this gold with these knights right here. That would be insane. Oh boy, but Marley's, Marley's coming in for the castle. Where is Teal's army? Teal's army is going for a raid instead of protecting this whole castle. I don't know if this is going to go up. 27 crossbows, 31 crossbows. Okay, some more knights are coming in, but the castle has been denied it almost 50%. But they should be able to push this back and then get the castle up in a little bit. Keep backing up, get onto the TC, get that TC fire on the knights as well. Garrison this, these two villages. Alright, decent, decent. This castle could still be denied. The knights are here. Crossbows need to push back. I guess the siege shop is maybe to add a ram to kill the castle foundation. I don't know if you really need to do that. I think your your eco's cooked at this point. I think you need to concentrate on just making crossbows and trying to add some eco. Yep, castle's not going up. Unfortunate for Barley. He was going for a get out of this game castle and it didn't really work out. Blue is also up to imp though, but he's a minute and a half behind. And numbers. Look at this. Timber has you know, 60 knights. Tullin's only got 20 because of all the damage he took earlier. And Timber is also up to Imperial Age. And Tullin's just now getting wheelbarrow. I think Liam's... I think Liam's team has this. Like, this army here is just going to roll through here, right? You kill Blue's crossbows, and then he's useless, right? Because he's only got the one TC. He's got no ego behind this to speak of. Once the arbs are dead, you roll through Liam's face, and then you send some of the cavalier to go raid Teal. I, I like the walls coming up, though. Tullin doing the team thing. He needs the rest of the team to join in on the walling, though, or else it's a bit useless, because, you know, if there's a hole here, you can always just walk through that. Ooh, the castle has gone up eventually. But, like, Timber's also in the position where he can easily afford to send just 20 knights, or, you know, soon to be 20 cavaliers to the top side to help clean up. Okay, we've got the armed elephants coming in. Ram down these buildings. Okay. Both going for these team upgrades. We do have plus four armor. Oh no, there's only plus two armor. Okay. He's going to have a very slight advantage having plus two, but he also has arb. Whereas because blue has no eco, he can't afford to get arb or all the extra armor upgrades. Plus just like, the, the numbers here from Timber are just overwhelming. This game... It looks to be over. Although Marley and, and Woot, they're trying to make things happen. They're rolling around. They've decided that Orange is dead. You know, kill 10 of these fields and then roll through Liam's base and just try to finish him off. But Liam, Liam is up to Imp. Neither of the pockets for Team Talon are up to Imp. Him for his 200 pop. Almost. Well, I guess, yeah, before this fight, he might have been 200. But honestly, he could almost have taken this fight by himself. He didn't even really need red at this point. But yeah, this game, this game's going to be over. And this is really unfortunate for Talon's team because... They drafted really hard for Arabia, and then their, their sibs for Team Acropolis, which is Liam's home map, are not the best. Like, cause they're going to have to win Team Acropolis now if they want to win their set, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do that with the sibs that they have available. Is Ethiopians a decent flank with the new team bonus of no stone outpost for free flanks? Um... Maybe, if people actually built outposts. If people remembered to build outposts, it could be useful, but they're mostly a good flank from the 100 food, 100 gold on age up, and then faster firing crossbows. Like, those are the important upgrades, or, or bonuses, I should say. And, like, free pikes is a little bit helpful when you're starting to add helps to support your, your arbs in Imperial Age. But, yeah. This game is over... Oops, I did that the wrong way. Liam's team. 
Whew. That was an impressive game. Uh, Timber. Whew, he was sick. He played that really well. I have to give if props to Snedo as well. He was he was definitely impressive. I think that could have been a little bit dicey in the early game, but but after that, once he got to Castle Age so much earlier, he just completely controlled the pace of the side of the of the side of the map. And then Tolan just sending all of his army to the top side. I don't know if it was worth it. Because Blue lost a lot, and then he just got absolutely destroyed leaving his army array. I think it would have made more sense if they tried to take a fight, kill off as many of, of Red's crossbows as possible, and then you can swing your reinforcements to the top side. But... You can't afford to just leave your entire army and just just pray that you can defend somehow. You can't. You can say the T word. You can say throw. I mean, I don't want to be too critical, right? Because I, I I also don't know what the team comms are like. So it, it's definitely possible that the other side are overstating the damage that they're taking, and so you feel like, okay, I have to take them at their word, and I have to go there and help them. I'm convinced of the wall in the base building. I completely agree. I feel like all of the flanks, except for Uncle Eero, built their buildings in really bad positions. Is is my tank. And the pockets just don't really matter, right? They can just sort of build wherever they want. But a lot of the flanks are leaving their buildings exposed. Uh, their gold, sorry. Like, Blue defended his gold with his rangers across the front of his base. He built the tower on the gold as well, which may or may not have been necessary, but you know, it's better to build the tower than to lose five or six bills or something like that. Oh right, well, let's 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 skip out. Let's take a look at the sieves. Like, look at this: losing with your three first picks. And what was the other one that they had? Oh my god, I forgot. No Japanese. Yes. And then on the other side, they win with the Huns, they win with the Incas, they win with the Travidians. And then they also did use the Slavs, so they won with that as well. Better building placement, slightly better macro and decision making, it'd be a completely different game. Um, There's the possibility, right? Like It's definitely in no way guaranteed, but having a safer gold gives you so much more flexibility in terms of what you're actually going to do. And and how you react, right? If your pocket's deciding to leave, for instance, and your base is really well built and really safe, then maybe you can defend for, you know, two or three minutes to just cross those behind your walls. But it's it's a tricky thing. I guess Lithuanians of enemies have to move to TA now. Who cares, really, though? Arabia is a terrible map that holds no importance. Well, in a best of three, it it holds a lot of importance, unfortunately. Yeet the Brit. <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely agree that Arabia is not the best map anymore. It's it's an incredibly snowbally map, which, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of maps are, but you know, a couple of misplays, a couple of issues with the flank, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're rainbowing around the map, like as we saw with with Bot Marley, right? He went from Man at Arms into Archer Skirms, and even though he dealt a ton of damage in the early game. Right, like he he really did hurt Finrod, but then his opponent, his opposing flank, and their pocket just rolled around the base. Right, they poked Teal, they killed a bunch of villagers on his gold. Then they moved on and they were threatening the top of Tullin's base and idling some of his farmers. Right, so even though he was technically winning the one v one against his flank, he was behind in archer numbers at a key stage of the game, which allowed the opposing team to dictate fights and force them to chase them all the way around the map and deal damage to three players 
while in the reverse, Orange was the only one that took damage. Like, yeah, forcing a tower from pocket slows down their TCs immensely. And also prevents them from potentially selling to get up faster. Yeah, it's, uh... It's a game where a couple of minutes, you know, here or there, really do make big decisions, or make big impacts on the game. And those decisions can decide... Decide who wins or loses. Game two time for Snedo's favorite map. We are going to Arena. That's true. We've got seven out of eight players in the lobby. Sarah top tier with market bonus plus, and market meta plus solid team bonus. Um... If you have a team, or specifically if you have a player that can deal with the lack of an eco bonus, is it's definitely a decent sieve, right? The issue is like if you compare Saracens with like the top tier flank sieves, which are like Britons, Ethiopians, Mayans, Portuguese, the lack of a Dark Age bonus means that even though you can both be up on nineteen pop or something like that, you are probably going to idle for a fill or two when you have to get fletching. Whereas all those sieves that have a good eco bonus quite possibly are going to be two to three fills ahead of you for the entirety of Feudal Age. Just because they have an actual eco bonus that they can use initially, right? Saracens, you're not building the market until like minute 15, minute 16, something like that. Just build two range plus market. I mean, I guess you could do that and then just delay your fletching by a minute and hope they're not super aggressive. But... Whoever just doesn't understand the new FC meme look meta. I mean, if that is the meta for Arabia Flanks, then I am all in. I want to go back to the days where you would 5 Militia Drush with Huns into 3 range CA. Can you play Sarah in pocket into 21 pop double stable scout with the market? I mean, it is probably possible, but not having Cavalier means that you have to switch to Camels you know, at the midpoint of Castle Age, right? At, at the latest, essentially. Which means that if, you're, if your flank isn't hard winning at that point, full camels is just really, really bad against any sort of competent, alive crossbow, crossbow player. Yeah, zealotry camels are fine. The problem is getting to Zealotry Camels, right? Because you don't want to hit Imp and have 40 Knights that you can't upgrade. Right? That's just shit. So you have to switch into Camels early. But the earlier you switch into Camels, the harder it is to play because you don't have Knights, you have Camels. Right? You, you, you need to be in a position where your pocket is alive and ideally winning. Oh, the top 10 before the U-Tech? I mean, I don't know if 10 pop is that impactful. You can upgrade the Imp Knights with armor, yes. Yes, you can do that, that's true. But, right, Cavalier is an extra 20 HP, an extra 2 attack on top of that, right? Plus, Cavalier is a much shorter tech than than Heavy Camel is. Heavy Camel takes a while to come in. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run an ad, because the spec delay is about to start. So, good luck with that. Hopefully there'll be no pre-rolls for other people coming in during the game. Heavy Camel is the chemistry of stable-based team upgrades? I mean, yes, it is. Like, Paladin also takes a really long time, but you've already got Cavalier before then to sort of give you a, a makeshift unit to use at that stage. Whereas Heavy Camel is just incredibly long for a unit that really doesn't need it. The problem is that, that nerf or buffing the creation time or the research time for Heavy Camel would potentially make the Camel sieves a lot stronger. Which is like, you know, Hindustanis and Gajara specifically, but also possibly 
Uh, seems like Berbers, Malians would have would have potential to be a little bit stronger. At least. Uh, the game, though, it is, is starting. Let's just jump into Capture Age. And we do have Arena here. Sims are... As predicted, I believe, the only difference is we have a Celt flank with Bengali pocket instead of the other way around. Which, I mean, is reasonable. Celts can potentially do some, some weird hong push with, you know, pikes plus mangoes and rams. And then Bengali player just booms into elephant arches. Might be, might be the play. Uh, speaking of, we do have Snedo plus Liam on the side with the two aforementioned sieves. On the other side, we've got Timber playing in the Zagoths, going for a big boom, we would expect. And then we have Finrod once again, this time playing as the Koreans on the flank. Against him, we've got the Blue, we've got Wood playing as Malay. Malay Trush. Um, trushing as Malay makes a lot of sense, but trushing against... Koreans seems sus. Just because of the free tower upgrades. Are the walls weak until Feudal Castle? Yes, they are. Uh, we start off with 1080 HP walls until you hit the Castle Age, and then they go up to 1800. This is this is standard D arena. As we see here, there's no prefixes or anything like that. Uh, the pocket for Finrod is Chuchu. We've got Viado coming in. And he is playing as the Poles. Sick, sick ego here. Siv. And then we have Tullan as the Pocket Bohemians. Which means that we have a flank Chudens. Okay, well, Chuden flank has to crush. Hmm. I don't like these villages. Why are you taking this tree instead of the two trees that are adjacent to the Lumber Camp? That's a very... It's a small thing, but you could easily fix that and then have, like, 30 or 40 extra wood by the time you hit Feudal Age. I, yeah, or maybe not 30 or 40, but you know, th there will be some noticeable wood increase later in the game. Ah, that's something that just kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Just, just ignore me complaining about it. But Bohemian Pocket is, I guess, similar to the Bengali Pocket idea, where you have such an overwhelmingly strong Imperial Age with Helb, Hand Cannon, and Hoof Knees, that... It potentially makes a lot of sense to have a different sieve playing as the flank. The um, and I guess having Chun flank just going for a trush is you know it's a pretty scary prospect that you have to deal with, right? The Chun trush with with eight villagers garrison fires so many arrows, you always win the tower war. How worth it is it to trush a pocket as flank? Worth trading a flank for a pocket in these Elo matchups? Um, it's certainly possible. The, the issues are the walking distance, right? You have to walk instead of, what's this, like 30 tiles between these two gates. 30, 60, like 90 tiles. So you've got to walk three times the distance, essentially, to hit the pocket. And you've got the problem where the pocket, the flank, if it's a scary flank sieve, like Spanish or Turks or something like that, just comes and castle drops your base and kills you and then walks onto your pocket, right? It's like, we imagine that the trush is here... They get into this base, they're, they're threatening the barriers a little bit, but then they get stuck by walls to the TC. While this is going on, Red builds a castle here, busts in, kills however many villagers, because he's still feudal age, and you've got, you know, some really strong, unique unit. And then you go Petard into the pocket, and you're essentially going to trade almost, you know, two players potentially to maybe get decent damage in. Crush into fast hit months. I mean... Oh, we see the bills going to stone. Definitely a possibility. The problem, as I said, though, is the point in, like, mid-feudal age, when everybody else is in castle age, when there's not a lot you can do if the other flank just attacks you. Is my worry, at least. Um, Grey is up to feudal age with him going for a trush. Blue almost has the food to click up. He's certainly... Oh, yep, he's going to stone, so he's going to get a trush going. Orange does not look like he's trushing, and ooh, his golds are nasty. This could be a bit of a pain, a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. 
I don't like that his scout is patrolling inside his walls. I guess he's worried about the the melee player hitting feudal age really fast, and then whoa, what the fuck? Why is Tullin up to feudal already? Oh yeah, no, he's not super fast. That's just twenty-three far. Okay, no, that's fine. Twenty-three plus two is totally fine for a boom. I just didn't even realize it was that late in the game already. <laughs> My bad. Um, are you actually touching woods? Maybe you're just going for a cast drop. Oh no, you've clicked feudal. Click. Okay, it's behind this hill. Okay, that's fine. He'll be up at. Still quite a late time for a trush, honestly. Right? Like, you see that Grace already got a tower up. Uh, humans was banned. And Burgundians were not picked at all. Which is a little bit weird. Burgundians are, are, are decent pocketsive. Um, but you're, you're very much playing them purely as a captive. Right? Whereas, like, Tudans are a really good pocket save because they can play Hell, they're so... Champions, Paladin, they've got lots of lots of varied options. Whereas, Burgundians just sort of only playing Helps. Well, sorry, you're only playing Paladins. You may be doing Help Hand Cannon, but you're doing a good Siege to support that. This is a way too late. You live Quick's Castle by Koreans to one Castle Tower and Yukuchi. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm expecting. But... There's no Vils forward. So it looks like he's doing a, a s kind of a feudal boom, it looks like. A, a mini feudal boom into fast imp monks, potentially. Snedo dead? Yeah. Snedo is just up way too late as a flank. Especially, like, as soon as you know you're against students, you need to be up in, like, 25 at the latest, so you can defend this. He does have loom, but, oh, these towers just fire so many arrows, right? They, they almost one-shot bills. With, with the number of arrows that they fire, and oh, this is not walls at all. Right, so if these scouts are just going to run in, they're going to start ganking villagers. Yeah, I think that at this point, Liam's team is essentially playing without Snedo. I, I would not hate it if Snedo deleted a wall and tried to run five bills to build a lumber camp in Liam's base. Because the chance of him just being all out defeated is... Not insignificant. Right? He doesn't have the gold to click up, so he's going to have to sell something. He also doesn't have the food. He's almost got the food, right? So he, if he does some force drops, he'll probably be able to get up, but oh no. Oh no, he's losing fills everywhere. These villagers go for another tower and die these farms. You always, always build your early farms behind the TT just in case this sort of, you know, annoying shit is going on so that they stay safe. Poles can now delete Snedo, whatever. Exactly, yeah. Like, if Poles are going to go for a, a Castle Age Castle into Night Flood, this is going to be open essentially forever, right? So, like, 20 knights can just run in here and kill this whenever he wants to. Marley not walling and Snedo upsets me. I mean, <laughs> Eco Kitty tab. Yeah, that's a good shot. He's lost three bills. Four bills. Oh, okay, I like the fact that he's trying to do these walls. But... As soon as he loses access to the stone, I think it's kind of, kind of GG. And he still hasn't clicked up because he hasn't sold anything. Just sell 100 wood, man. Oh, he's also short of food and he's got no food income. Oh, Seto's dead. This is unfortunate. This is unfortunate. What's Liam? Liam's going for one TC, two TCs. Hmm. He's up. Plus four bills. So 26. Yeah, he's up kind of late for only doing a 3TC boom. Like we see here, Timber's up in basement at the same time. It's a sieve that has a similar ego bonus. And he's going straight into four TCs. On the other side, the poles are only going for one TC. Maybe he's saving his stone for a castle. Oh, no, there's another one. And then Tullin was really fast. 23 plus two into three TCs. Watching this trush and Robus commentary makes it easy to counter with full vision. I mean, countering a trush as any Civ but students isn't that hard, I would say, most of the time. Like, you can always, you know, just make a mistake and die. 
But Chudan is just such a fucking pain in the ass. You know, they're able to garrison so many villas into the tower, fire so many arrows, they just absolutely destroy you. Zeno is up to castle. And on the other side, Finrod's going for a castle. I guess he's going to petard and wagons into Blue's base. Blue's only adding one TC, though. And he's still been mining a ton of stone. How close is he? He can build a castle. Yep. I don't like the castle position, though. I mean, like, I would have built it... Hmm. That's a tricky one. I would have considered building it out here to, like, sort of secure this gold in the front of his base, but you can always worry about petards just busting through these houses. So... In hindsight, I think this is a good castle. This is why we opened Drush Boys. I mean... Unironically, that is probably the best thing to do. Like, honestly, having the pocket just do, like, a, a 5 militia Drush is probably a really good way to defend it. Because the pocket can, you know, afford to go up, like, 28 plus 2, 30 plus 2 sort of thing, and then just go straight 4 or 5 DCs, and sort of catch up the ego difference, and then... This still allows the flank to be up faster fuel if they need to, or or be able to just react however they need to. He's walled in his own tower there. Killing the market makes a lot of sense, but now that Red's in Castle Age, he'll make a couple of mangoes. But even a even like a single mangonel is probably not going to beat a Shooting Tower if it's garrisoned heavily enough. It's so stupid that it's genius. I mean, what, the five militias from Pocket? I don't think it's stupid. I honestly think it's probably the best thing to do. The issue is, if your opponent is big brain and just says, you know, fuck it. <laughs> We're not going to trush. And now you've essentially sacked off the pocket and possibly also the flank trying to to defend something that we're not going to do, right? I think the biggest brain play... Holy shit, he's just walking under this tower. <laughs> There's nothing in the TC. <laughs> he just doesn't care. Oh, he's down to 19 villages. This is so sad. I'm sorry, Snitto. Oh, boy. And like, as I said, like a single Mechanel is is not going to work. I don't think. As long as, like, Marley always has a tower to garrison in. By the way, Marley's almost ready to click up. He's got more villas coming in. He's committing. Oh, send the villas. I like it. He can't afford to lose this wood line. The question is, how many bills are going to die now? Trying to repair this. Oh, Marley's not even committing to the tower? Oh, okay. The problem is the Manganel is going to hit the bills. <laughs> oh, no, oh no! <laughs> Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, no. oh and the Magnell died as well. Oh, that's Titanic. Uh, what is the sling rules? Uh, you can only sling an imp, or but you can sling the resources to build a TC if somebody is unable to build a TC. But yeah, Seno is just completely dead. As I said, Liam has to like, full play this as if Seno is just not in the game. He needs to 1v2 on his side. <laughs> and just... Zeno needs to run to- Yep, yeah, oh! <laughs> the Vill running is coming. Oh. Oh, this is sad. On the other side, the Korean wagons have not really done anything. The castles and stone walls and some defensive monks. Really good play by Woos. Um, not having a third TC is, you know, not ideal, but his melee, it's kind of okay. Green, though, has built a castle. That's a very sus place to build a follow I'll be honest. I don't think this farm would count. Oh, actually, no, maybe it will. Or... Yeah, okay, no, the farm does count. Okay, nice. Um, I think Green has mostly built this castle just to defend from the, uh, the wagons. Not because he wants to do a night flood. I think he's going to go up to Imperial Age based on his, you know, number of villages and, and eco. Marley is literally throwing. This is why he should have walled him in. I mean... Yeah, maybe. He tried, a little bit. Is this when Marley just drops a TC and starts booming back here? Oh? What happened there? Resources, Marley. Did he just try to douche and lose a TC? <laughs> maybe? I don't think so. Let's. Oh, I can just scroll back, can't I? Play. 
Oh, I know, he deleted it. Oh, that's unfortunate. I, I, I was very much hoping that he would <laughs> try to do and get wrecked. Just for a little bit of... <laughs> a little bit of Seto getting some revenge, you know? Let's just speed up a little bit, seeing as I pause. Um, so he's got five bills on the TC, and the rest of the bills are over here. Ooh, how many conversions are we going to see here? He's got one already. I think Finrod's... Oh, oh no! No! Oh, holy shit. Oh, Finrod. Finrod. That was like... Oh, oh, oh no! No! no. <laughs> holy... Okay. If Tullin's team doesn't lose this game, this is going to be the biggest throw in forever. Oh, that is just horrible. And, like, the problem here is, like, Liam... Okay, he's going for Elfin Archers, but it's so obvious that they're going to do Elfin Archers that Tolan just opens Skirmish plus... Oh, he's doing hand cannons. I don't like hand cannons. I would just be doing Skirmish plus BBC and just completely roll through them. Hand cannon starts... It's, it seems so bad. I mean, like, I understand it. Hand cannon is just... The better unit, and by the way, Marley did go for the sneaky boom TC. But um, I think Elven Archers should just beat hand cannons. If I'm being honest. Um, relics. One relic for Woot. No one's picked up any relics other than Woot, and then Liam getting one now. That's weird. Um, there we are. The war wagon delete was a day we just that moment. I mean, that was just horrendous. You've done all of this investment in an army push, and Blue has just gone up to Imp and been like, yo. <laughs> uh, Huskar swing could affect them? I guess that would make sense if he only went Skirm. But you would hope that the pole player is just going to have, you know, full cav flood to him. Like, you see here, like, the hand cannons just can't fight elephant archers. Right? Oh, that's a dead elephant archer. A dead bomber cannon, sorry. I mean, I think the... You can go husk and help. Yeah, of course. Of course. But, like, I, I think that poles are totally fine just running cheap cavalier into... into helps. I I would say that especially if he had like four or five relics, I think just trading in into helps is totally fine because then the rest of your team is going to be useful, right? Oh, because of fake unit. I mean, eventually you would want to get into them, but early game, just you know, forty cavalier versus forty helms. I think the cavaliers would be decent. Oh, well, there's still a decent number of wagons here. How many stables does Green have, is the question. If you only have six stables, that's not enough as poles. You need, like, 12 stables, easily. To keep up with the production that you want to have. Let's not forget this is Viado. The Winged Hussar Choo Choo. I mean, the Winged Hussars with trample damage, as well, is going to be decent against helps, right? Poles have, have decent options against full helps. You know? And here we see Tullin's just being completely rolled. Or at least initially, right? He's lost a bit of his forward position. Because he was doing hand cannons into his skirms. Tullin needs food monks. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, food monks versus elephants would make a little bit of sense. The question is, how quickly can Bot Marley reboom into it? He's got 93 bills, Snedo still only has 13 bills. He has made it to Castle Age, though. So, you know. <laughs> you got two TCs. He's, he's getting back into the game slowly. Old Hussar is better than Polkav? Quite possibly, yes. Um, Malay don't get hand cannons, if I remember correctly. Karambits are, ooh. Parambits will be decent. The problem is that there is a decent number of wagons behind this. 
which, you know, do add a, a not insignificant amount of damage into the engagement. How are the scams doing? I mean, Liam just has such a strong EQ. He's got 140 kills. He's just adding in Lycav to help deal with the scams. Elf and Arches. He definitely needs Elite, I think, to really commit to making Elf and Arches. Which is, I guess, why he's making so many Lycav instead. Wagons will overkill Grambits? I mean, I guess that's true. That is definitely true. But overkilling, I don't think is an issue, right? Because you just need to essentially help out the, the the goth spam, right? Like, in theory, your units should never be dying because you're just constantly fighting behind a wall of Huskulls and, and helps. Let's go back to normal speed. Oh, I say that, and all of a sudden, there is no goth units in front of him. I think the, as soon as Bot Marley gets into the game, which is, you know, less than two minutes away, I think that they're just going to roll through Liam here. And Sneddo is just... What is Sneddo even going to make if he gets to Imp, right? Pikeman, probably, but he's, he's just never going to have an ego. He's just so far behind. And, like, remembering that they also have access to almost all of Sneddo's stone and gold to, to keep them going. TA, yeah, here we go. I mean... I think we are almost guaranteed to see a game three at this point. Like, I haven't even looked up here, but like the bill difference is insane. All right, 150 bills because Seto has nothing, and Orange is really far behind the bill count as well because he invested so heavily in the wagons early in the game. Great that the tawny is balanced well. I mean, it's. I think it somewhat helps being the early rounds. Right, where everyone's still trying to, to figure out how they want to play. Um, do I click on a single one? How do I get, like, a single... Okay, there we are. He does have a lead, okay. Um, you know, figure out the strengths and weaknesses of their teams, figure out their strategies and how they want to play, right? Because other than the Tutan Trush, I feel like this game has been very, very passive, right? Like, both these flanks could have just drop a castle, and then boom behind it, and it would have been essentially the same result. In theory, it would be actually better for the Korean player if they had both just boomed, because he has a better late game. But Malay has a better timing, so eh, I guess it goes a bit of both ways there. But yeah. The, um... Or oh, Gots are now being forced to send units to the other side, which is definitely not ideal. And shooting champions are just going to completely roll through any... any Goth spam that gets there. And, you know, every unit that he sends to the top side is not a unit that's down here. And, like, Blue just has so many bomber cannons here. It's going to kill all these barracks, kill the castle. I think we're definitely in the position where we're just waiting for the GG to come in. I think Finron... Yeah, he definitely tried to be aggressive. But, you know, just dropping our castle and booming behind it is not a, a bad way to play arena. Right? Or even just like start booming and have, you know, four or five builds slowly mining stones so you can build a castle at minute 18, sort of thing. Losing the wagons back here definitely hurt them a lot. Trying to be more aggressive. I guess if like he'd stopped at that point and just come back and save them for the stage of the game, having essentially doubled the army would be pretty bad would be pretty useful. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Ooh, the Elfman Archers are rolling around the map. I mean, Liam and Timber are actually doing a decent job of pushing back on this side. But, oh, like... <laughs> a bunch of infantry just popped out, and I think they're just going to destroy this army. Well, we've got elite Elfman Archers now, though. The extra damage versus Skirmish from Bengali is coming nice. Extra damage versus Skirmish. Oh, you mean on the Cav? Do they have extra damage versus Skirms? Two. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I'm, I was more interested in the, the taking less damage from Skirms, to be honest. I think that's definitely useful. Is it only for Wrath or is it for all Cav? Or all melee Cav? I don't know. I never really understood how the bonus is worded to begin with, so... Oh no! Bomb by cannon shots on the arbs. 
Oh, that is painful. Oh, Orange just lost all of his army, basically. And, like, these wagons are going to die to bomber cannons as well. Like, yes, wagons are big tanky boys, but cannons are, are cannons. <laughs> I like this. Walling off so that he can just safely mine the golden stone back here. I don't... I guess you have to make some arbs so that the skirms don't get rolled by Lycav. Which really does suck because the arbs are just so useless against the elephant archers. Like the elephant arch... The, the arbs almost need to stay behind the skirms. So that the skirms take the elephant archers and then the arbs kill the Lycav when they roll up to the skirms. Is I think the way they have to take that fight. Hey, they do win here in the end. But at the same time, Liam is... You know, in a decent position over here. The question is, how long does it take Marley to get the SO? No fucking way, Robo is back? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Uh, I'll be casting, hopefully, all of the Elder Draft tournament. Except for games that I'm playing in, obviously. Um, that, that is the ideal situation, so that we have coverage for the... for the tournament. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't know what's going to be going on. We'll, we'll see how this goes. If people like watching... Oh, that was a nice shot on those arbs. If, if there's enough people watching and the, there is interest, then maybe the streams continue. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Oh, this archery range keeps triggering me. I keep seeing the teal dot there and thinking that they've pushed... I mean, Liam is definitely playing out of his mind here to keep this game going. And Zeto is, you know, up to 70 heals. He's getting to a respectable number. The issue is going to be, how does he get to imp, right? And we see here, the other side is already starting to trade a little bit. Um, not exactly the best trade line. Like, I would like to see a market back here. Or, yeah, even better, like, markets back here. And then try to wall the middle of the map. Whereas, really, the other side, Liam's team is going to really struggle to get, um, get trade rolling. Simply because they're, they're constantly under pressure from both sides. They don't have the resources to spend on trade. They don't have the time to wall the map. So Snedo is really going to have to either sell his soul, or someone needs to sell him 800 gold to get to him. And then once he's in, in him, he needs another 1,000 gold to get upgrades for Helms or something. And making helms versus, you know, shooting champs plus their own helms, plus the support from Bengali arbs and hand cannons. Probably playing longer to allow Snedo to calm down a bit after that early mid-game. Or game 3, the mental game. Um... I mean, I guess that makes some sense. Um, obviously, I don't know the, uh the mindset of the players themselves, so maybe that is something that they're thinking about. Oh, no. Finrod didn't even take out his main gold. Oh, that is that is a nice find right there. That's a ton of extra gold for their team. And also, like, the extra golden stone that they've taken from Zeto's base helps the trade transition for their team so much. How haven't they won yet? I don't know. Zeto is on 83 bills. He's going to carry soon Copium. I mean, yeah, hopefully. Like, back to, like, talking about Snedo's mindset. I think if I was playing this game, I would probably be tilted, no matter what, and playing longer is just going to make me even more tilted because I'm wasting my time trying to boom back into this game when I'm never really going to be in the game. And the other issue is going to be... I, I would feel like I lost because it's my fault, right? I'm against students. I know that they're going to trust me most of the time, right? So, not having prepared for that is my fault. Uh, what is this? Elo is this? Yeah, it's a mixed Elo. So, it, it's a draft tournament. The the 12 best players in Oz New Zealand have drafted their teams. So, the best players, like, 2k1 to 2k4-ish. And then, the weakest players are about 1 to 2... 1,000 1, to maybe 1,200, something like that. And then, you know, between each team, it's all a mix. 1k5 to 2k2 in this game? Uh, something like that. Um, Finrod is, I think, about 
yeah, 14, 1500, that would make sense. Woot is probably the same. Woot's been playing out of his mind this game, by the way. He has been just... Whew. Ah, this is Mitsok. Ah, sick. That's definitely a name I recognize. Oh. Timber's trying to trade, but... Finrod's dying at this point. Like, Sedo is just getting back into the game. He's getting... Kavama? I guess he's gonna go for... Hussars? Do Celts get Hussars? I guess they do. Weird how most of the stronger players went pocket. I think you can have more impact as flank. Um... I think it goes both ways, right? It depends on how you play and how how the teams play. Oh, but yeah, we, we see the, the Onagers, we see the SO coming in now for Tutans, so Bengali's just gonna die. Skirms plus SO just sort of destroys Elephant Archers. I mean, I think the, the worry with Arena is imagine if Celts was your best player and you're getting Tutan Trushed, right? No matter how good you are, a competent Tutan Trush is always annoying to deal with, right? And there is always the potential that maybe you won't die, but you know, you're delayed by five minutes to do what you wanted to do. Which means that, you know, you, you've picked, you've put yourself in blank and then you haven't done anything with it. And you don't have the strongest pocket to come bail you out, right? Because necessarily having the best players on flank means you're going to have weaker players on pocket, right? But okay. The GG is called. We've got one all. Whew. That was an interesting game, but honestly, I think Mali won the game. Like, I don't want to take anything away from Woot. I think Woot did brilliantly. The the monk trap on the wagons back here was insane. His unit switches have been really on point, opening helms and then switching to cram, but this with bomber cannons has been great. It's 2 a.m. and we have one to go. I mean, yep, yeah, that's... And and the one to go is Team Acropolis, which is, you know, not exactly a a short game, right? Play Bohemians. And then over here we had Goths. Yep. Yep. And yep. So it is slightly higher picks for Tolan's team. But nothing crazy, so. Bill's Australia, man. Yeah, Oz and New Zealand is, is rough. So, remaining sieves for TA. Three of their top row sieves for Liam's team versus one for Tolan. That's... They, they hard-picked their home map, right? Lithuanians, Vietnamese, Burmese, and Italians. Or, no, they have to have Hindustanis. So one of these is going away. I think I prefer Italians over Burmese, honestly. So let's get rid of the Burmese. Saracens, Hindustanis, Vietnamese, Italians. I don't hate these sieves, but they're not my favorite. But having Spanish, Berbers, and Tatars is just crazy strong. And then Saracens is just such a good late game sieve that they add so much. Ugh. This is kind of cracked. Uh, let's go see. Right, they haven't hosted a new lobby just yet, which is understandable. That was quite a long game. It's it's reasonable for the players to go take a break, get a drink, go to the toilet, and whatnot. Is FC Conk the play for the Spanish player? Yes. Like the the way that I would see this is we have Spanish doing conks, Berbers doing camel arches. No. Spanish doing conks, Berbers doing knights, or scouts into knights, Tatars are doing either FCCA or scouts into CA, and then Saracens are probably trying to boom. Given Italians is last pick, I suspect Burmese over them. Um, I guess that does make quite a bit of sense. For me, the issue with Burmese is that whenever I play with them, they feel useless, and whenever I play against them, they feel really good. So... I'm not a huge fan of using them myself. And I think, considering the amount of Cav right, that they have, I feel like Genbos is really strong, but then you don't have maneuverability. 
as Snake is saying, right? You just got slow ass Jimbo's, and like Vietnamese Rans are slow as well. If you don't have Burmese, you're committing to playing defensively, I think. You're sitting on your hill, and then expanding around the bottom of the hill, and then trying to get it to late game, and trying to win a superior late game sieve. But you don't have superior late game sieves, because they have Spanish trade, they've got Saracen, Mamelukes, and SO, you've got Berber, Camel Archers, and Tatar CA. And Spanish Paladin. I, yeah, no, I don't... I don't think you can possibly remember... Possibly remember? What am I saying? You can't possibly win this game if it goes to, like, post-imp. Like, you've got Hindustani Caravansarai, which are nice, and Genbos are okay, and Lighters are okay if you get the Relics, but you don't have anything to really fight Saracens. I think Saracens sort of just hard kills you. The Noz on TA. Noz, I mean, we had some, some sick tier games in Nations Cup, let's be real. Ugh. Oh, I'm just going to quickly duck out for a second. I'm going to go to the bathroom while we wait for the next game to uh, to get started. Okay, the, the Spectre Lay has begun, and they have launched into the game with Burmese instead of Italians. Which, you know, it, it does make sense. They did pick Burmese significantly earlier in the draft than Italians. Um, the, as I've been saying, like, the issue is I don't see how they really beat the spanish berber Saracen combo in post-imp. And I don't see how they beat the spanish berbers tatars Castle Age comp. So, I think it's going to be very, very rough. And the other issue is that Lithuanians have to, like, hard draft or hard fight for the, the relics, right? Let's fire up the predictions. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Start a prediction. Who will win game three? Option one, Colin. Dina. Option two, Liam. Um, let's go for five minutes. Hello, Robo Stream Boy. Yep, that's me. 
all in on a one hour 30 game. Not on who wins. No, no. We're just going for the winning team. We're not going for the length of the game. Sorry. Um. Oh, this is a sick pond. We've got a pond with five fish in it. That's crazy. Okay. I think, like, a better question would be, which player is going to go dock the pond? Odds on seeing the horse scums. Not zero, but close to zero. We, we, we triple sling the Spanish player into 200 donks. I mean... Sus. That's, that's what I'm going to say there. Um, okay, so sieve-wise, we've got Spanish on the flank. Then we have Berbers. And then we've got Hindustani. Sorry, then we've got Tatars. And then we have Saracens. I guess the Saracen player is just going to FC and expand out to here. Maybe the Saracen player goes for a couple, like, goes up the stable... Goes up with scouts, plays scouts, and then into boom on the sides. The, the star player does FCCA. The Berber player either does scouts into knights or does FC knights. And then... Oh, what the fuck? This is not supposed to be possible. Um, And it's happened on this side as well. Are we not using the NC version of... Of Team Acropolis because that one's not supposed to be able to touch the edges. Admin, the problem is that Liam and Tullen are two of the admins. Uh, has the map description been balanced to avoid no spare res in the back? Um, it's designed to have minimal resources. I think it's just rare. Okay, I would say that it's kind of balanced because both teams have one. If only one of the t I guess the question is, is this wallable? I don't think so, because that looks like it still rocks all the way to the edge. In that case, it's fine. Otherwise, I would probably try to go jump into their voice chat and and let them know that they should read for the hill. But they've got one each, so I guess it's fair. I mean, and also, like, this wood line here is pretty nice. You recall it happening in practice? Weird. Are we not using the NC version, then? Oh, the relics are still on the hill! What the fuck? I thought we were using the Nations Cup version. Oh, okay. Hmm. Never mind, I take it back. In that case, then this is a really shit version of Team Acropolis, because there's no extra golds and stones out on the map. Oh, that's because they've used the wrong version. They've used Oz and Zed. Um. Uh, Tullin, you guys have used the wrong version of TA. Have we? Yes. Yeah. You've got the, the Oz and Zed map pack version instead of the tournament version. Seriously? Did Liam do that? Fucking Liam. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess you guys can discuss oh. with them whether you're going to re or not. I just thought that you know. A admin decision. Okay, nice. So we've got the t the two teams that are led by two of the admins have used the wrong version of the map. <laughs> this is this is perfect. Yeah, it's the old NZ version, so you know it's bad exactly. It's like you've got one relic per hill. There's no extra golds and stones down in the corner. Oh. That is Titanic. Where is Desi? I know. Where is Desi? Someone go find Desi. Admin's not reading the rule book. <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll find out in like 90 seconds if they read or not. I guess when the, the game decides to pause. Uh, that is. Whew. I will act as mediator. Admin call surely means the team that didn't host gets 5% handicap for each player. <laughs> Robo Yuan's for the admining. I mean, it, 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 the problem is that playing on this version compared to the version that you expect to play really changes the way that you plan how to play the game, right? Because there's no goals or stones in this corner or this corner. Whereas in the NC version, you would expect two or three goals and you know one or two stones in each corner to fight for. In this version, all the golds and stones are at the bottom of the hill, so there's no reason to expand until you want to get trade. There's no problem. Robo is default at Master Admin for any AV2 tournament. 
Yeah, the guaranteed relics as well. Like, it completely buffs Lithuanians to hell because you've got four relics on your hill. <laughs> Classic Tornios trying to stir controversy for likes and views. I mean, if it gives me the likes and the views, then let's go for it. There are some varies that you can fight for. I mean... Okay, they're paused. I guess they're going to discuss it. Let me go tab out. Let me see. Back dashboard thinks that they're still in the game, but they're probably... The dashboard still lives on, like, the two-minute delay as well, I think. Who has the latest time zone amongst the players? I think they're all Australian. Except for Mali. Oh, no, Woot's New Zealand. Woot's a Kiwi. So I guess for him it's 2am. That's a little bit rough. Mali's on Perth time. Yeah, so he's in the best position. Woot might be in China. Ah, okay. If that's the case, then then there's not really any issues for them. If I tap into the game, can I see any chat? I can't. Hmm. Um, also, sus to note, it's almost nine minutes and nobody has built a dock. I do not like this. Wrong version of map. Do we re or just go new post? Whoops. Yes, I'm fine with playing if you guys are up to you, Tolan, since it's my fuck up, as I assume what he said. Sorry, 14. I'm good if you are 14. Okay. They are continuing with the bad version of the map. And nobody docked the pond. I hate it. So many Oz NZ players is giving me scheduling nightmares. But I guess it's fine since it's only... Yeah, exactly. I think Trace is the only one that's like not in East Asia sort of time zones. He's like just in normal Germany. But he knew that going into it. <laughs> is handbook ruling on server always an Oz? Just curious need any advantage I can get for micro. Yes, the server should always be played on the Oz server. Keisha's UK? Really? Damn. Feels bad, man. That would make... Yeah. That would make scheduling a real pain in the ass. Alright, well, let's just take a look at how the team wall is going. Okay, we have the standard certain player who is going for scouts. Slowly getting the walls up. What are you doing there, Snitto? you got two tiles toward this wood line. Two tiles. Do you not see the wood line? What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Oh. Tolan is still overseas. No, Tolan's back in Oz. I'm pretty sure. I thought he was back. If I remember correctly, he said that he would be back by the start of the tournament. Uh, I don't like that wall at all. That kind of annoys me. That's a premium wood line to chip later. I guess that's true. It is a good wood line to take. So making it safe is reasonable. Yeah, but we see this very, very slow um, attempt at team walls. Which I guess you don't really have to rush the team walls back here if you know that this is walls to the edge. Like, same thing on this side, right? As long... Oh, shit! Does that one actually go to the edge? Oh, I know. Let's just got a speedman standing there. Broski is going the long way. Which Broski is that? Where are red scouts? One scout. Two scout. You've got less scouts. Even though you have defense advantage. Because you have one scout over here. Is he going to walk into the spearman? Oh, two spearmen. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, I think they're just on stand ground as well. So that units can't walk past them. <laughs> it's sick, right? Because they're on stand ground, units can't like get past them. So they're just completely chilling. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> Go Tolan team due to new posts on Mapic. Yeah, that's fair enough. And thank you for the for the bit. I do appreciate that. Um. Yeah, at this point we're just sort of waiting for everybody to get to Castle Age. The scouts aren't really doing much. They're just going to sort of poke around at these balls on the bottom, I guess. Oh lord, that archery range from yellow. Ooh. Yeah, that's a bit rough. 
you almost always want your buildings like forwards as part of the wall so your army can get out and you know go do things what are you buying with that bit i mean i'm going to invest it and then you know keep reinvesting it and we'll just see how that goes in a couple of years i might have a dollar <laughs> that range is just used for researching text i mean yeah i guess so um okay people on the way to castle age Orange is not up to Castle Age and he's Spanish. I guess Orange has scouts? That seems like a waste. Why is the Spanish player making scouts and not doing FC Kongs? Does that mean that Liam Liam's going FC Marches? And no docks, yeah, I know Kiwi. It's it's disgusting, I hate it. Okay. We've got Vietnamese going for Radens. We've got Burmese going for a Rambai. Or a Ramboys. Snello doesn't have his conch license. I mean, just switch positions with Liam. Like, conks are just so insanely cracked for early Castle Age, right? Just absolutely cracked. The, the, it's the best time to be using them is in your Castle Age when there's no army to fight, really. And you just run around one-shotting anything you like. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the strategy. I mean, I think Liam being the better player is... Wanting to have the better late game, Steve? But I don't know if I even necessarily agree with that. Like, Camel Archers are obviously a really good unit when you get to the super late game. But a good Paladin player can really have a massive impact on how a game is played. Right? You know, deciding when fights are to be taken, um, getting good surrounds on the enemy. So I, I don't think it would be a waste to have your best or your second best player, you know, playing Spanish Conks into Paladin. What do you think about the Pierce Armour Nerf on Conks? Um, it definitely makes them a little bit weaker, which I think is perfectly fine because they were so good, but I think that they are still uh, still good enough that you want to be playing. Stars go Keshikir, no? Uh, maybe in the super late game, like once it becomes a wood game after everyone's got full trade, but before then they should be constantly making CA. Right? Like your army comp is going to be... I, I assume he's not even going to go Conks, right? So he's just going to do Knights into Paladin, Camel Archers into more Camel Archers, CA for now, maybe Keshik Slater, and then the Saracen player probably does Camels into Mamelukes and SO. So, CA Flaming Camel? Yeah, yeah, that's a good call as well. But you're definitely not switching to C into Keshiks for a long time, right? I would only really be considering it when you get past the hour mark and you start to run out of wood, basically. And then making f food units is far superior to making uh, wood units. Then full sling. I mean, Keshiks are a good unit, though. I don't know. Uh, assuming you have the castles and the farm eco already, I think that doing Keshiks makes a ton of sense. I like this raid, but there's only three units and they've only got fletching. So... He's not really able to do a ton of damage. I mean, I say that, but he got four bills. That's actually pretty good. Then sling for pallet, SO, and BBT. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Ooh, how did Red Scouts get in? Did somebody have a hole in the... Oh, I think that's a hole. Yep. I guess... I assume that that's where they came in. It would be Kongs, Mimelukes, and Camelodges. Maybe that's too many of you. Yeah, Kongs really fall off... In, like, the late game. You, you want Paladins so that you have a good front line to to chill, bind with your ranged units. Well, having a Rambai just chasing around scouts is so bad. Like, a Rambai are, like, kind of in a similar situation to Conks, where they're really strong early game, and then they start to fall off a little bit later in the game. So I feel like you want to be, you know, out on the map trying to deny the players expanding for TCs and whatnot. Five eco kills from Timber. Yep. Okay, his scouts did well. Finrod CA did pretty well, and I guess Snow's scouts have also got in somewhere and done some damage. I I've not been paying really any attention to what their army is doing. Yeah, that Vil lead is almost entirely um, the 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 KD here. Um, TC wise, yeah, there's not a lot of expansion going on for for any of the players. I hope to see the Lithuanian player drop a monastery pretty fast. Because the the issue might become 
if the enemy team has a large military advantage, that they just come over here and they yoink one of the relics. Like, that, that's probably what I would be thinking is, you know, we're in a pretty good position. We've got a decent amount of army. We've dealt quite a bit of damage to their eco. Somebody drop a monastery, send a monk across the map, and try to yonk a relic. Because <laughs> the Lithuanians, as soon as they lose, you know, one or two of the relics, their late game starts to fall off a little bit. Robo stream pog. That's right. Burmese Ellie coming to a cinema near you. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, like the Burmese are going to be doing a Rambai into, into Ellie's when you get to late game. I don't think Finrod had all TCs on the control group. That TC, that TC. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. That one of these TCs has just not been working this whole game. <laughs> well, that's a bit unfortunate. But even so, like they're still in a in a pretty solid position. And like especially denying this top side here from expansion. He's spending his food on early Bodkin. I mean it wasn't super early because he didn't have it when he was over here reading this wood line. So we got it sometime around minute twenty, I would guess. But yeah, like denying this top side means that Gray is forced to go forwards instead of TCing up this way for the stone and gold. Which means that he's kind of hogging some of the space that Teal wants to go into. I mean, I guess Teal does have this woodland, but you don't really want to TC back here at the stage. Because you're already, you know, a quarter of the way through the woodland, sort of. It just came in minute 23. Well, that's not early. <laughs> minute 23 is not early Bodkin. Early Bodkin would be, like, doing it instantly upon, you know, hitting Castle Age. That would be early Bodkin. This is just... This is just getting Bodkin. <laughs> Oh yeah, see, like he's just, he's so forced into the middle. Like they're very cramped for space almost, which is funny to say on TA because it's such a large map. But it, it is really important to have people spread out and not hog everyone's gold, especially right. Because I believe off the hill there should be two golds per player. All right, so those two are for grey. These two are for teal. Those two are for blue. That one's for green, and then there's one missing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Oh, six. And I guess that one counts. That one's just really far away. Seven. Huh. Okay, never mind, I take it back. It's not two each. It's one each, and then there's just a random number of extra ones, it seems. Just spread out somewhere. Do you belay ballistics for much longer than, than this? Um, no, I think this is a good time to be doing it. Once, you know, you've got a decent number of units. Like, because if you did ballistics early castle age, you're cutting production. Yeah, I, I, I counted this one already. That, that was part of the seven. For both sides. Um, but yeah, if you do uh, Ballistics early Castle Age, it means that you're making less army, so your Ballistics is affecting less units. And because it's such an expensive tech, you, you want to get as much value from it as possible by affecting as many units as possible, right? So, and, and just like having 5 CA with Ballistics, oh, that is fucking open. That's been open this whole game as well. <laughs> That's a sneaky little one. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, 5 CA with Ballistics is like, who cares? You're still going to die to, you know, 6 Knights or something, or 6 Camels or whatever. So, once you've got a solid eco count, which is, you know, 50-ish, 50 to 60 bills, I think makes a lot of sense. That's a good time to do it. Um, I, I like this play, though, from Tolan's team. They're really committing to army less on the eco. Because, as, as I've been saying, you know, in the, in the pre-game chat, I don't think that they can win in a post-imp even battle. They need to get an early advantage and then push it, right? They need to deny a bunch of golds or deny both the corners or, or kill someone's TC, you know, something along those lines to put them in a position where they're able to win this game. Because the, the just the units and the sibs are just far too strong for Liam's team, I think. Liam's got 90 veals. He's getting close to the point where I would consider idling for imp. We see on the other side, but Marley's about to click up. He's only been on... 
Two TCs? He had this third TC really late. Oh, I don't like doing imp there. I feel like you want to do... You want to be making villages in this TC so that you can keep mining gold. I guess this TC could set the gather point forwards, maybe? But I would prefer to do imp in that TC, honestly, and then this one keeps sending bills to wood. By the way, Vietnamese is, I think, a very underrated sieve for TA. Having the eco upgrades that don't cost wood is really strong when you're getting heavy plow and and bow saw. Because usually in Team Acropolis, you're really struggling for wood early castle age when you're trying to do everything else because just the wood lines are so shitty around your base. So the wood free upgrades, you know, saving 200 wood plus 100 wood on the, on the feudal age ones is, is pretty sick, I think. I think it's quite nice. Um, these units, yeah, they need to run. <laughs> The CA need to, like, roll up, like, get closer to the C camels, I think, to shoot them. Yeah, try to kill a couple more. Uh, where are the Raddens at the moment? Ooh, that's unfortunate. It looks like all the Raddens are dead over on this side of the map. Yes, yeah, so everything else is just chilling over here, waiting for Imperial Age. Um, the thing at this stage of the game is when you need to start thinking about uh, stonewalling, right? Start stonewalling towards a corner so that you can set up trade. Army and bill counts have evened out now. That is true. And we've got two players up to imp on this side. I don't like it being the Burmese player who's up to imp. What is he going to do in imp? I guess he's just going to commit to Elephant Arch, in, into Arambai, sorry, because 60 deals is definitely not enough to switch into Ellie's. I haven't played a genuine team tourney since the Shared Vision, but given the market meta, I kind of feel that Shared Vision doesn't matter as much. Um, Hybrid water maps are definitely makes a difference trying to to gank the dock bills um you know having shared vision is really useful there for other maps i think it's mostly just being able to more easily communicate about where people are taking resources where um where they're they're vulnerable where they're team walling etc etc like as kiwi says like taking early fights being able to see exactly where your teammates archers are right and knowing okay i've run um, you know, 10 tiles too far forwards, I'm going to get ganked if I stay here by myself. Burmese should get Ellie Archer. I mean, maybe. I think it's supposed to be an Indian-only unit, but, I mean, I wouldn't hate it. I don't know what you're doing out here, though, Talon. You're, um, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Holy shit, I'll, almost all of the teams up to imp except for blue. Oh, I guess the same is true on this side, except for red. Hmm. Sus. Yeah. I'm... I'm a little bit unsure how this game is going to pan out at this point, to be honest. Things have evened out quite nicely. Blue is still just, like, full flooding knights. He's only just now adding a monastery. I don't like this. I mean, having even just, like, one or two relics in early castle age is so... Impactful, right? You get such a, a nice attack upgrade versus the other knights. Like, you can just skip doing forging and um, iron casting, right? Because I think it's that one. Iron casting or blast furnace, whichever the castle age one is, right? You just get them for free. Tull and bottom score, what a noob. I know, right? What is KD? 2744, disgusting KD. What does he think he's doing? But yeah, picking up the relics is essentially getting the attack upgrades for free. Plus it generates you gold, right? So I feel like you should always be dropping a monastery like as soon as you hit Castle Age. Maybe you delay it a little bit to get two TCs going and then you add it. Okay, I like this castle so that you can start to get some trebs out. But the, the issue here is that Camel Archers is just such a sick unit. Like even with Radon's like all their PS armor. The Camel Archers, like they're big tanky boys, they got a lot of HP. Especially with, like, this, this numbers advantage that he has, which is quite insane. Getting the last armor upgrade. I like that. The last armor upgrade is going to make him basically impenetrable. Still reckon Burmese Kondo with Siege Tower and Ogulam with Siege Tower is a solid late game trade sneak. Um, I mean, why don't you just make two petards and then send, you know, 20 CA? Because they're going to kill trade so much more easily, right? Okay, three traps rolling up. Uh, I think Liam probably loses this castle, I would guess. 
Blue's on the way up to Imp. Red is also up the way up to Imp. Everyone's up. Teal does have a very, very sloppy eco. Sloppy, I say. He's got not a lot of bills, essentially. Okay, we're seeing Talon starting to go for the wall off the trade. Um, I think Red has seen this. If you peter, they get the attack warning. <laughs> I mean, I think any competent team should notice when there's a bunch of enemy units in their trade line. And you want to kill as much trade as possible as quickly as possible, right? Which is why you want to use ranged units. The, the, the issue with melee units is they can't... Yeah, yeah ult G, exactly, right? Like, that that's how you're able to see um, raids come in really easily. Military view and ult G. Yeah, between the two of them, you see everything, basically. Everything that's important. Ooh, this is rough. They're starting to add markets, but they're not walls at all. And I'm guessing that green... Oh, I love this castle. Yeah, Yonki wanted their golds and building a castle in the middle of their trade line. This is the sort of... Whoops. That is the sort of play that you make that wins you a game. 90 second add. Whoops. Sorry. That just automatically happened. Time to sub. I mean, if you're able to and if you're willing to, feel free. But don't feel like you have to. But yeah, like... If they don't notice this castle fast enough, they're going to make like 10, 15, 20 trade cards. They're going to walk past this castle and all die. And while this is going on, this tread push is continuing to be pretty pretty dangerous. The Cavaliers, he's still not picked up all the relics. Oh, he hasn't picked up any relics. Okay, he's about to get the first two. Okay. That'll make a big impact. And he's got... Oh, that's... Oh, that's like... I thought he was doing Paladin. Orange is doing Paladin. Oh, this is a bad fight. Get off the hill. Get back off the... Oh, gank these two trebs. And then go back to your trebs. You don't want to be fighting on the hill like this. If you wait a couple of hours, you can get a discount in September. I mean, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see you all back here on Saturday for the next match. And then you can you can get your September subs in. Tullant is continuing to get these walls up. I do not like using that tree. This is where you can get a sneaky, sneaky raid in. By just chopping the tree and walking in. I send another bit to stage off the ads for the rest of the set. Um, I don't know if that's how it works. The, the The issue is that you need to run three minutes of ads an hour if you want to turn off pre-roll ads. And so, it's either people get an ad every time they join the stream, or every 30 odd minutes there needs to be some ads. I'm not sure which is better. Um, the amount of money that I make is going to be like fucking peanuts. Which is like not even worth it. The question is more what is more or less annoying for everybody else. Hey Synthetic Salt, how's it going, man? Unfortunately, I haven't been updating the Wikipedia for the set because, you know, I've been a bit busy. So, maybe you want to go do that. But I, I think that Liam's team should clean this fight nicely. I think because they had Paladin come in, right? Whereas Blue's switched into Hussars and now he's taking Paladin, which is a little bit rough. You, you want to have Paladin as quickly as possible. Oh, and he's only just got plus four armor. Oh, that's so bad. Not having plus four armor when you've been chasing these camel archers for so long is really bad. A pre-roll ad normally means I nope directly out of a stream, so that's probably bad. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly my point of view as well. Unless I'm really, really dedicated and really want to see a stream, if I see a pre-roll, it's just, like, not even worth it. I thought this would be a Liquipedia editing stream. I mean, if people want to watch me, I can edit it once the match is over. Snitto has six power, they're dead. Um, I don't know about that. I think they're in a decent spot. I think the biggest issue is that Liam's already lost two castles, and they've lost access to a lot of golds, and their trade is non-existent. Although I say that, and Tullin's team also has no trade. So both teams are going to run into a brick wall in approximately five minutes when they start to run out of gold, and they haven't got trade set up. Woot is a loomless god. Really? <laughs> so he is. <laughs> nice. I actually do get sad with ads in between games, to be honest. Sometimes it's, that's the quality theory crafting from Lone Hosts. I mean... Yeah. It's it's a tough one. Get up on the hill, man. Why are you downhill slightly? Go stand next to the stable so you're on equal ground. Like, you're winning this fight anyway, I think. 
closely, but being downhill means that you're not going to win the fight, essentially. Spanish, huge help with pop efficiency. Yeah, they will be once they start trading. The issue is, as I said, like there's this castle in the way stopping them from trading, right? So they're just stacking trade cards and trying to trade down this bottom side. Oh, he's got some trebs trying to come snipe this castle, but the hussars should kill them, to be honest. And like, that's a horrible feeling, right? You make a trade card, it doesn't collect any gold, and it dies. Also, the relics seem to still be sitting around. Where's the tab of the relics? Three relics are blue, no relics at all, right? All four relics are on your hill. One of the players should have picked them up just for the gold income, right? Like, you pick them up at minute 20-ish, you start collecting them, I mean. By this stage, you'd have gathered a thousand extra gold, which is insane. Like, that allows you to pay for your trade. This is why we wall? I mean, yes. Oh, this has got the... Why has it got the bugs? Indian walls. Thanks, Capture Age. Um, okay, yeah, the walls are a little bit out of place. <laughs> yeah, but the wall across the side means that they force any attacks to come through this area, this space. I say that, but they are just running past, because the army is just sitting here, trying to kill the castle instead of preventing these raids. Not ideal. Um, we also don't see any Caravanserai yet, which is something that I would like to see. Liam could probably just short trade to the top. I mean, yeah, at this point, they sort of have to, right? You, you wall to this wood line, you build a market here, and then you trade that way, just so that you have some trade income going. Because eventually, you're going to just need gold from anywhere, right? And a little bit of gold is better than no gold. Castle's dead. I mean, yeah, like, yellow's full switching into Hussar, which, you know, is a pretty good unit, and they've got the extra pierce armor because Tatars, but you, you really want them to be making ugh, ugly walls. Uh, making CA almost entirely. Uh, probably a castle up here on this hill, would be quite nice. It secures the bottom of the hill a little bit, helps fight off these raids. I do not like what we're just doing right now. Take a shot every time Robus is right. I guess maybe I do say that quite a bit. Would you mind showing Green's KD, please? Bot Marley, 185 to 80, and Liam is 214 to 115. Like, he does not need 60 Rambai just sitting here babysitting some trebs. Right. While this is going on, they've got a bunch of armies over here trying to fight, uh, fight up green. Radon's OP. Radon's a really good once you get to Imperial Age, right? The problem in Castle Age is they're just such a slow unit, right? They're going to constantly get just chased around the map and, and forced away by other units. The Berber U tech is solid with all you. Yeah, the faster production castles is always sick. You should always be getting that, you know, at some point in Castle Age. Probably, like, when you click Imp is, I think, when you want to do it. Um, yeah, if there's no SO, Rattans are definitely really strong. And, like, the, the lack of trade is definitely preventing um, Saracens from making SO, right? The, 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 the Hussar raids have killed quite a few bills. And the Trebs are starting to roll forwards again. They want to get another castle. I think Tullin's team is... In a, in a position to win this game at this point. Oh. I like this wall. Tolan is committing to it. Oh, purple's trying to wall in the trade. It's just a little bit too late. And there's still a bloody castle on the way. Oh, sick. This this house here from Mali is massive. Because it forces the trade that was sometimes pathing down the bottom. To go through this pathway. Which forces them into the, the range of the castle. Like, look. We're going to see this trade cart. Bump around the wood line and die. Dead. Oh. There, there we are. Hussar's there to kill the Treb. That's nice. Yeah, and like, just like, the Paladin player, in this case, like, Lithuanians, having the relics is definitely going to help him keep making these Paladin. He doesn't have to be, like, full Hussar. Just adding in, you know, 10 or 15 Paladin with the extra PSR and the extra tankiness, the extra damage is really huge here. And like, they're forcing essentially three players to come here and try to clean up the side so that they can trade. But... I don't know if it's if it's going to work out, because you've got two ranged units fighting randoms, which is like not ideal. You want a huge swing of, you know, like 40 Paladin. The problem is that they can't get 40 Paladin because they don't have trade. Oh! Mm. I... I... 
I hate it. Has anyone docked yet? Nope. Cannon aliens in the late game are pretty good. I mean, like that's two two castles that you could kill there with cannon aliens. Ah, uh, that is painful. That is painful. I you know, I don't want to be too negative, but but losing with these sieves feels really fucking bad for Liam's team. I think. I I would be very disappointed. I'd be very disappointed to lose with these sieves on this map.